Hi everybody, it's Aurel at Local Motors and welcome to this tutorial showing one of my coloring techniques. First I would like to give a quick overview of the different tools and functions I will use during this video. The brush tool, shortcut B, the eraser tool, shortcut E, the paint bucket tool, shortcut G, and the eyedropper tool, shortcut I, or you can hold on option while you're using your brush. I will only use two brushes during this tutorial, a sharp one and a soft one. And as a side note, don't forget that you can use the square brackets to increase or decrease the size of your brush. And finally, the transparent pixels locking, which is represented by a small checkerboard. When it's on, a small lock appears on the right of your layer. The shortcuts I gave are for Photoshop CS3 on Mac, but if you want to learn more about the shortcuts, you can go to the Edit tab and click Keyboard Shortcuts. I usually start by referencing the colors I plan to use on a separate layer. In that case, white for the highlights, blue for the sky tone, red for the car, grey for the background, and finally black for the shadows. Then I set the blending mode of the sketch layer on multiply and create another layer behind for the grey background. I lock the pixel transparency of the background layer, therefore it allows me to use the eraser tool as if it were a brush. For example, in that case, my eraser tool is a soft brush that will paint in red, whereas my actual brush is a sharp one that will paint in gray. Now it's easy to switch from gray to red by using the X shortcut, and it's easy to switch from a brush to another one using the shortcuts B or E. Now that the main surfaces of the car are defined, I start working on the integration of the car within its environment. I flip the picture to have a new point of view and then I start refining the surfaces. At this stage, it is good enough to work on white reflections, so I create a black layer over my sketch, I lock the transparency, and I turn its blending mode on screen so the black disappears. I use the eraser tool as a soft white brush, and apply the color in a very rough way, everywhere I want reflection. Now I can start refining the white areas with a black sharp brush. So, why am I creating a log transparent black layer instead of just working straight with a white brush on a blank layer? There are three reasons. First, it is faster to switch from soft to sharp brush in that way, and the brush or the eraser can play both roles depending on the fact you work with black or white. Second reason, if you have to modify the reflection in a local area, you don't have to think in terms of opacity, but just in terms of color, or level of grays in the current example. Last reason, this way of doing things is a very good training to understand the logic of the layer mask tool in Photoshop, which is one of the most interesting features of the software. OK, the white reflection is done now. In order to enhance contrast and realism, I create a new layer for the shading and the dark parts of the car. I usually put the shading layer in the back of the lighting one to not mess up the brighter and lighter colors of my drawing. So 
some more white and black to improve the interaction between the car and the background. And then I create a layer in multiply mode and I paint in blue all the surfaces that are sky oriented. And I finally modify the blue with a hue saturation tool. Uh, shortcut is command U. The sky tone improves the realism of the car, but on the other hand, it reduces the brightness everywhere it's applied. So it's important at this stage to add some more contrast by highlighting the edges with a thin white brush. And finally, the wheels. When I think it looks good enough, I flatten the picture and I use the Unsharp mask to give a better finish. Here is the final result after I used some color tools such as levels and selective color. For information, it took me a bit more than 30 minutes to color this sketch with a Wacom tablet. And it could have been a bit faster using some other tools, but I wanted to stay as basic as possible and really highlight the transparent pixel locking tool. Now, don't hesitate to post your comments, questions and drawings at local-motors.com in the tutorial part of the design process section. Thank you for watching and see you soon for some other videos.